The terms Sultan and Sultanate are related with the history of Islam. During the declining phase of the Abbasid Caliphate, many Turkish Amirs or nobles disintegrated. By this time, most of them had their own territories. These regions were called Sultanate. The term Sultan means the first among the equals or the first among the ruling class or elites. Mahmud of Ghazni had first used the term Sultan. The Sultanate of Delhi was established in 1206 AD by Qutbuddin Aibak. He was a Mamluk slave of Muhammad of Ghor. Qutbuddin Aibak preferred to call himself Sipahi Salar. His successor Iltutmish called himself the Sultan. His territorial jurisdiction over Delhi and the adjacent regions came to be known as the Delhi Sultanate. Islam is an universal affair, but uh, in the declining days of the Abbasid Caliphate, actually the Khalifa is considered to be the sole leader of Islam. However, the term Sultan was first used by Mahmud of Ghazni. The second Sultan was Iltutmish, who definitely was known as the Sultan and uh, his uh, territorial jurisdiction over Delhi and the adjacent regions uh, came to be known as the Sultanate. So that was the beginning of the Sultanate of Delhi. From the very beginning, the theory of kingship or the question of legitimacy over the Sultanate was of utmost importance. Several justifications were provided in favor of such legitimacy of the sultans. Such uh, existence of political authorities was necessary for the maintenance of law and order and peace in several parts of the Islamic uh, region, and particularly more so for the support and protection and existence of the religion. Secondly, uh, the sultans usually, while they were very uh, in a independent uh, in their respective jurisdiction, um, they would wisely and very prudently sought uh, the consent of the caliph. The sultans definitely avoided the intervention of the ulema or the sharia in the rule and the administration itself because they seriously took into consideration the multitude of non-Muslim subjects. This consideration became more prominent uh, uh, in the time of Alauddin, who started appointing Hindus to high posts. Balban uh, came to power after an anarchic period of long 26 years. He introduced uh, a theory which was not in cognizance with Islam at all, the theory of divine right, kingship. Reality led Balban to borrow from pre-Islamic Persia the idea of the divine origin of kingship. And he was uh, proclaiming himself Miyabati Khudai, meaning the servant of uh, God, and Zil Ul Allah, the shadow of God on earth. He also introduced two Persian customs in the court, that is anyone approaching the Sultan had to prostrate himself uh, on the ground and then uh, rise and kiss the hem of the dress of the Sultan. Prostration was known as shista and uh, kissing uh, the hem of his garment was known as paibos and Balban wanted to establish the prestige, the pride, and the dignity of the Sultan in that manner. There was a definite a conscious attempt to protect the common people on the part of Balban. Alauddin Khalji had appointed Hindus to high posts in his administration. Muhammad bin Tughlaq had also enjoyed trust of the non-Muslims. 
He was a good friend of two joiner monks of the time, Jinnab Prabhasuri and Raj Shekhar. He conversed with them. He participated in the Hindu festival of Holi and Diwali. He also discussed with them religious matters, undertook discourses, religious discourses with Hindu pandits. Muhammad bin Tughlaq was also uh, referred to, very interestingly, he was referred to by uh, Raj Shekhar in his Kurpura Manjuri as Srimat Maharajo Muhammad. He was given a Hindu epithet, Hindu title. Firuz Shah Tughlaq was an orthodox Muslim ruler. He proclaimed himself as a Sunni Muslim Sultan. But then, he also took a genuine interest in Hindu scholarship, particularly in the study of astronomy and astrology. His enthusiasm uh, for the culture of the country is seen in his preservation and conservation of an Ashokan pillar, which he brought with much uh, enterprise from a village uh, beyond the river Jamuna. He got it with much care and had it set up in one part of his palace. This was what gave uh, the true and the rightful legitimacy to the Sultan, the Sultanate regime. They were able to earn the, the support and uh, the goodwill of the people. Ma'am, uh, since the rulers were Muslims, should we call it a theocratic state? And how far was it theocratic? Uh, it's a very interesting question, yes, uh, because all the sultans were Muslim and it was uh, within the universal uh, mm, jurisdiction of Islam. But interestingly to, be no, uh, to note that uh, the Sultanate of Delhi in particular was not a theocratic state. It happened in the time of Iltut Mish actually. A group of religious men, authorities called the Ulema, would approach Iltut Mish and request him to turn the Sultanate of Delhi into a Darul Islam, meaning the uh, land of Islam. But Sult uh, Iltut Mish um, ignored them and openly declared that he would rule by Jahandari and Zawabit. Now, what is Jahandari? Jahandari is actually a rule of the Sultan based on his sense of justice, goodwill, and order. And Zawabit is a collective word meaning that the Sultan would rule by proclaiming ordinances in a regular manner. These ordinances would have the validity of law. So Iltutmish was giving a political ideology to the Sultanate, which was not based on the Sharia, the Islamic law. He realized that the Turks were few in number and forcible conversion uh, would lead to the end of any possibility of the continuation of the Sultanate in this country. Well, uh, in this connection, can we say that the Sultanate rule was despotic in nature? The Sultanate rule was definitely despotic, uh, I mean, if you can use that term. It was authoritarian. The Sultan was the sole authority. But once again, I'll go back to the term Sultan, which meant uh, first amongst equals, meaning equal uh, first amongst his Amirs. Now, who were the Amirs and who were uh, the Amirs were the ruling class, the elite, ruling elite class. They were known as Amirs or Maliks. The Amirs and the Maliks in, uh, in the early period, they were usually, they were slaves. But a special kind of slaves, they were known as Mamelukes. They were bought at childhood from the slave market, educated elaborately, and given training, exhaustive training in every aspect of military science, so that they grew up to be very accomplished and uh, in course of time they were freed of their bondage and they became part of the ruling class. Iltutmish was an Amir of Qutubuddin. Qutubuddin was an Amir of Muhammad Ghori and uh, later on uh, Gyasuddin Balwan would definitely 
a slave Amir would seize the throne and become a sultan. The same thing would happen with the founder of the Tughlaq dynasty, Giyasuddin Tughlaq, or Jalaluddin Firoz, Khalji, the founder of the Khalji dynasty. So there was a limitation on his power and authority. This is best seen in the time of Razia. The armies became so strong that eventually Razia had to meet their opposition, their threats, and she was killed, assassinated in the process. And those um, uh, sultans followed Razia. They were just tools in the hands of the armies. During his tenure, Ghiasuddin Balban had absolutely curbed the power of the Amirs. Alauddin Khalji had followed his footsteps and completely controlled the Amirs or the elite class. He had prohibited their social meetings. This was because he felt that such assemblies could hatch plots against the Sultan. At the beginning, the Amirs, the ruling Amirs, were uh, they were mostly Turks, but from the time of Alauddin Khalji, we find Hindus were being incorporated in the administration, particularly in the time of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, there were quite a few Hindus included in the ruling elite class and no came to be known as Amir too. Ma'am, was this a military state? And what was the role played by the ruling elites? It was essentially a military state, no doubt about it. Uh, the Turks brought in the horse, the fine, quick moving, the speeding horse in battlefields. Uh, they were horsemen, they had to be horsemen uh, essentially. And uh, the, the Sultanate Empire that was established in this country, in Hindustan, was actually uh, based on their military skill, military power. They fought with the Rajputs, extended their power over Chittor, such kingdoms like Chittor, Ranthambore, uh, Jaisalmer, Bikanir. And in the time of Alauddin Khalji, the powers, uh, he conquered Gujarat and the almost the whole of South, though he did not uh, bring it under his uh, actual jurisdiction of administration. So uh, these conquests, the Sultanate Empire was based on these conquests and conquests were achieved through military power. So it would not be wrong to say probably, perhaps, that uh, militarism was an essential part of the Sultanate. But it was not wholly, uh, completely a military state in the sense that uh, there was this sense of justice, the establishment of law and order, uh, as an objective, a major objective. There was no clear-cut jurisdiction between civil and military duties, and uh, the elites, uh, the ruling elite class served the Sultan as military officers and also helped him in his uh, civilian administration. They were paid in land grants, which were known as iktas. This payment of the military come civil officers by land grants was brought from Central Asia. This is known as the Iktadari system. The land grant was known as Ikta, and Iktas uh, were given to them uh, in specific territorial uh, boundaries. They were given the right to collect revenue from those specific lands, uh, land grants. Uh, they could keep a portion, a required portion for themselves as part of their salary and the rest was sent to the central treasury. That was the arrangement. The Ikhtadari system was introduced in India by Iltutmish. He had imposed certain strict regulations. The Ikhtadars could be transferred from one land grant to another. The Sultan reserved the right to take back the land grant from one Iqtadar and give it to another Iqtadar or convert it into Khalisa or his own royal lands. The Iqtadars were not hereditary. Each of the founders of the different dynasties of the Sultanate uh, was an Iqtadar or a, a member of the ruling elite class. 
to start with, to begin with. Like Iltutmish or Qutubuddin or Gyasuddin Balban, definitely a very important Amir and a part of the ruling, uh, member of the ruling class. So also was Jalaluddin Firoz Khalji, founder of the Khalji dynasty, and uh, Gyasuddin Tughlaq, the founder of the Tughlaq dynasty. But sometimes and most often uh, when the opportunity came, the, uh, a member, a more ambitious member of the ruling elite, elite class could rise in revolt against the Sultanate. At other times, they helped him, supported him in his work of administration. Iltut Mish particularly had no problem with his Maliks and Amirs, with his ru ruling class of elites. Uh, as long as he ruled, they were completely uh, and absolutely subordinate to, me, to him and they were fearful of his power. The term Sultan means the first among the equals or the first among the ruling class or elites. Mahmud of Ghazni had first used the term Sultan. The Sultanate of Delhi was established in 1206 AD by Qutbuddin Aibak. He was a Mamluk slave of Muhammad of Ghor. Firuz Shah Tughlaq had taken a genuine interest in Hindu scholarship, particularly in the study of astronomy and astrology. Alauddin Khalji had completely controlled the Amirs or the elite class. He had prohibited their social gatherings. The Ikhtadari system was introduced in India by Iltutmish. He had imposed certain strict regulations for the Ikhtadars. The central administrative structure of the Delhi Sultanate was headed by the Sultan. He was assisted by his court amirs and Ikhtadars. Ikhtadars often acted as provincial governors. Their main task was, apart from collecting the revenue, to send in soldiers to the Sultan's army. This was the situation in the time of uh, Iltutmish. But Alauddin Khalji completely abolished the Iktadari system in the sense uh, that they were to act only as governors of the provinces. They were in that capacity also known as Maktis, Walis, apart from no, uh, being known as uh, Iktadas. Alauddin Khalji organized a large army which came to be known as the Alai army. Each soldier, he paid cash salary of 240 tonkas yearly, annually. He also offered 78 tonkas for uh, additional 78 tonkas for a soldier uh, who could bring in another horse. He fought two wars in battles in Rajasthan, one against Chittor and the other against Ranthambur, very successful battles. Then he conquered Gujarat. Four Hindu kingdoms in the south were all won over by his able and trustworthy general Malik Kafur. These four kingdoms were Dwarasamudra or Karnataka, Warangal or Andhra Pradesh region, Devagiri or Maharashtra and Madurai, consisting of parts of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. During the reign of Mohammed bin Tughlaq, the Delhi Sultanate extended from Lahore in the north to Karnataka in the south and from Gujarat in the west to Bengal in the east. Bengal was conquered and brought under Sultanate jurisdiction in the time of Iltutmish. It remained so in the time of Gyasuddin Balban. But uh, in the intervening period, during the Khalji and the Tughlaq period, Bengal became sort of independent, ruled by independent Turkish chiefs. Firoz Shah Tughlaq of the Tughlaq dynasty sent uh, two expeditions. He himself led the expeditions to Bengal, but he was a total failure, and Bengal became an independent kingdom. Earlier, in the time of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, uh, the south also seemed to be coming out of uh, the authoritative control of the Sultanate. Two kingdoms rose in independence. One was Muslim, the Bahamani kingdom, and the other was Vijayanagar on the banks of Tungabhadra, 
With the death of Phil Shatuglog, the Delhi Sultanate began dwindling in size. During the reign of Iltutmish, the Mongols threatened the northwest frontiers of the Delhi Sultanate. The initial Mongol raids were led by Genghis Khan. He moved across Central Asia, Baghdad, and finally came towards India. He had come in pursuit of Jalaluddin Mangbarani, the fugitive prince of Khwarezm or Khiba. Jalaluddin wanted help and support and refuge from Iltutmish, but Iltutmish, after considering the situation, felt it not wise to give him political refuge. But Chinggis somehow did not cross the river Indus. His soldiers probably refused to cross the Indus. Shortly after, Chinggis died, and uh, the Mongol threat was reduced to a certain extent. But there were occasional raids, so the frontier had to be protected, and Balban took that uh, trouble to set up forts uh, uh, on a chain of line uh, in the frontier. During the reign of Alauddin Khalji, a few Mongols had settled down in some parts of Punjab and also around Delhi. They came to be known as New Muslims. Alauddin was very strict with them and was often oppressive. In Muhammad bin Tughlaq's time, uh, there was uh, a possibility of an attack by Tarmashirin, the then Mongol leader, but it did not materialize into an actual threat. After that, uh, the Mongol threat completely diminished and disappeared. All the ordinary common people like craftsmen, artisans, the religious leaders belonging to the ulema class or even the Sufis, they lost their patronage which they used to enjoy uh, from the sultanates which had now disappeared and they all came down to uh, Hindustan. And Iltutmish understood uh, that uh, if he offered them rehabilitation and lands for settlement, then um, that would be for the larger benefit of Indian economy, the economy of the Sultanate. And it really happened so. Indian industries, particularly textile, happened quite rapidly because of these coming of the artisans and craftsmen from and also traders and merchants from Central Asia. Now, what was the position of the Hindus in the administrative political structure? You see, when the Iktadari system was introduced, the Iktadars were supposed to collect the revenue from their respective Iktas or land grants, and uh, while keeping the required portion for themselves, which was their salary, which was to be their salary, to send the rest to the central treasury. Each Iktadar, in whose uh, particular ikta, there would be quite a few Hindus who were known as Rais and Ranas. They were acting as irregular, irregularly as unofficial collectors or helpers in the collection of revenue. The Iktadas had lost their right to collect revenue in the time of Alauddin. They only remained as provincial governors. Alauddin thought of incorporating them in the administration. So he created posts uh, which were given Persian names like Khut, Mukaddam, Chaudhuri, Patwari, Shikdar, Amin. They now acted as intermediary officers collecting their revenue. And there would be uh, an official collector called Amil who would come and intervene and supervise over them. Most of the rulers of the Delhi Sultanate wanted to dissociate Islam from the everyday working of the administration. With the exception of Firuz Shah Tughlaq, almost all the other sultans isolated the ulema. They were not allowed to interfere in the administration of the Sultanate. The sultans wanted the support of the Sufis. The Sufis thus provided advice and guidance to the sultans. The Sufis were actually the mystics, who were not as ritualistic as the ulema. They differed in certain manners, in various ways, from the mainstream Islam, the institutional Islam. They had their institution called Khanqa, which was like an hermitage, where uh, they had 
three establishments the jamaat khana where everyone met for prayers musafir khana which was the guest house and the rasui khana where the kitchen was and uh, they entertained people from all communities particularly to the lower caste and the lower class hindus and unconsciously or consciously many of them would uh, accept islam so some of the historians feel that the sufis were more responsible for the spread of islam in this country than the aggressive ulama the sufis believed that god could be approached individually through intense prayers and meditation they did not claim as the ulama did to stand as interpreters of the religious texts and intermediaries between god and the people so these religiously liberal sufis proved to be a strong pillar of support for the rulers of the delhi sultanate the term sultan means the first among the equals or the first among the ruling class or elites mahmud of ghazni had first used the term sultan The Sultanate of Delhi was established in 1206 AD by Qutbuddin Aybak. He was a Mamluk slave of Muhammad of Ghor. Firuz Shah Tughlaq had taken a genuine interest in Hindu scholarship, particularly in the study of astronomy and astrology. Alauddin Khalji had completely controlled the Amirs or the elite class. he had prohibited their social gatherings the iktadari system was introduced in india by iltutmish he had imposed certain strict regulations for the iktadars during the reign of mohammed bin tughlaq the delhi sultanate extended from lahore in the north to karnataka in the south and from gujarat in the west to bengal in the east The Mongols threatened the northwest frontiers of the Delhi Sultanate during the reign of Iltutmish. The initial Mongol raids were led by Genghis Khan. During the reign of Alauddin Khalji, a few Mongols had settled down in some parts of Punjab and also around Delhi. They came to be known as New Muslims. The Sufis were mystics and philosophers. they provided advice and guidance to the rulers of the delhi sultanate